Hello, uh, this is Amarjot Singh, and uh, hey, I'm in Edmonton. Uh, it's close to three o'clock here in Edmonton, and Toronto time is five o'clock, and uh, I have on the line, on the camera with me, uh, my old client and friend, uh, Rajat Bansal, who, who is with me to share his good news about his getting the landing paper for his wife uh, today. And I think this is fantastic news. Uh, and I welcome Rajat, uh, Rajat Bansal also, uh, and with your wife, New, uh, to, my, to my channel. And I congratulate you, both of you, to getting the PR in record time. Uh, though actually, uh, though Government of Canada promises that the most uh, spouses' cases will be turned around in about 12 months, but sometimes because of other difficulties, they exceed the time. But uh, the, the time ha timeline has been, uh, you know, 80% of the cases about 12 months, and you got this in record time. So less than 12 months, you got the PR for your wife. And uh, congratulations to you, and uh, I, it's a wonderful journey. I met you. I met you in. Uh, I mean, I talked to you first time. I think three years ago or two years ago in uh, 2018. 2018. Yeah. And you were you were working in uh, California on H-1B visa, I think. And uh, you you filed for express entry on your own, and then you were in relationship with your fiance at that time. Uh, and uh, she's from you're from Vietnam, and both of you met in U.S. It's a wonderful uh, conjugal story. <laughs> And uh, you, you uh, then, and then we discussed at that time uh, whether to marry at that time or whether you should come first, and then uh, ask her to come on a maybe study visa. Tell me, tell me a little background so that people can understand how did you plan this out and how did this uh, Christmas uh, belated Christmas uh, gift came into your uh, possession. Yes, sir. So, um, I mean, I have some friends in Toronto who came here as international students and their PR process was pretty painless. And uh, I was working uh, on a visa uh, in US after my studies and I realized that the path to permanent residency is very uncertain. Uh, I mean, it, it takes a long time. And just to clarify, sir, I was not on H-1B. I was on OPT, the post-study work permit. Okay, okay, okay. And I didn't get H-1B two times. And I had okay. one attempt left, but I didn't take a chance because I felt like I had enough score to be able to qualify for express entry. And uh, being in tech, I, I knew that Toronto tech market is really good and it's growing, especially now. And uh, I had my childhood friends here with whom I could get real time news, like how the life is and everything. So I felt that this is what I should do because on H-1B visa, your wife cannot work unless you reach a certain stage in the process. I, rem I don't remember the form numbers now. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want her to, you know, face that, you know, when we decide to get married and my, my H-1B situation itself wasn't clear. So I did this, I, I got my, I think my PR got approved end to end in four and a half months. So, uh, and then I decided, and I think you suggested that time we could get married and then land so that she lands on PR. But we realized that th the timeline was not really working for us and it's better that one person first secures himself, you yeah. know, coming here, looking for job, things like that. And uh, once I had landed here, uh, I think within a few months, uh, we we of, uh, got engaged, uh, you know, we had ceremonies in Vietnam and that was 2019 time, pre-COVID time, relatives came, I think 40 of my relatives flew from India to Vietnam, we had our ceremonies there and yeah. together we came back and when I was preparing to come here for PR, she had made sure she get admission here. She got admission in York University for an accounting course and she, her visa was approved as well even before we got uh, we, we got engaged. So so she was due to come in. So nowhere it looked like, you know, this was planned in a way from the immigration perspective. We were like, she had to study. So she's coming and, and then we landed here uh, after like marriage. For me, it was second time. It was her first time. And uh, then in October time, October of 2019, we got married here uh, officially. And uh, then wait, 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 wait a second. So when you said you got married here in Toronto, you married with a, like a marriage commissioner going to a yes a, civil a, ceremony there. OK, how much how much did it cost in Toronto to get married uh, officially that way? I think for a marriage license, we paid 
around fifty dollars or something. Yeah. Like But that. for the ceremony, uh, or for the official thing, it was around one fifty dollars or something. One fifty dollars that we paid after we got married to the official. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's about about uh, less than three hundred dollars. You got the whole whole thing done. Yes. Yes. And, and uh, the the marriage said. Tell me the marriage ceremony. Uh, how did the marriage ceremony in Toronto? How did that happen? What happened in that ceremony? Sure. Sure. So uh, in the marriage ceremony, uh, so uh, they need you to have at least two witnesses. Yeah. So I invited my friends. uh two of my friends and their sisters also came one friend also get married so five people came and uh, she invited her relatives who my live uncle, here yeah. her uncle and their family who live in north york so we were 10 12 people and yeah. uh, her uncle and my friend signed it as a witness and there was like a half an hour ceremony uh, the vows exchanged and some photographs yeah. and that was pretty much it uh and yeah. then we just came home and so by the way before the marriage right like when we uh, came here after engagement we we started cohabiting together we started living together in this very apartment itself so all her sin number uh, her ontario id card all had the same address all her every correspondence as you know our addresses match we made sure of all these things so so yes because you are a smart you are you're a smart husband you are a smart sponsor you know you know how to do your homework well <laughs> so thanks to your videos as well and i think the government of canada if you really put effort has done a pretty decent job they have given you a whole kit of spouse sponsorship you need to just read through it a lot and so yeah so october we got married and then by december our uh, certificate came so yeah. certificate took time so it came in december and then we started this whole process i remember i spoke to you and you suggested few things and then we thought okay let us do our thing and then we'll come back to you for maybe an hourly consultation so went through that kit and if any questions i would like uh, look around uh, not but blindly google but google on some relevant forums ask some of my friends who had gone through sponsorship process as well and made sure i read everything and did all the documentation printed everything uh, took out our work history or even chat history from dated back to 2014 15 yeah. took all those prints and took all the photos of the engagement made sure parents show up in every photo all our parents friends our photos from california when she used to visit me all those photos including chats and then the main civil ceremony photos and then the explanations like why the parents were not here because they had already attended everyone in vietnam all those explanations and filled all the forms carefully uh, got her because she had studied in us we needed her police certificate from us as well yes. so us vietnam so yes. all that was done and that took almost like almost a month and then in the end we spoke to you and and we shared some documents with you i remember yeah. and you pointed some mistakes and you told us to work on our history like like uh, we we have everything but we didn't really put a documentation of history how we met all those details that we coherently attached in the application after the consultation with you and then we just prayed and then we just put everything and said bye bye to that package <laughs> and uh, yes yeah, sir and then for a while we didn't hear anything i think around march of 2020 march, we, yeah. they hmm. said that we have received it after, and after that uh, sorry after how many months you got the file number uh 2 months 2 months. months file number and okay. then it was dead silence and yeah. then in october i raised a web form i said okay even i don't know if i'm yet approved or not so what's the movement they said some covid reasons then in the uh, in the beginning of november i got approved for my sponsorship so there are two applications right so i got approved and then they send I, request for they send request for medical medical, medical her medical yeah on november yeah and uh, we got the medicals done within within 2 3 days we mailed uh, we submitted it was online they submitted the hospital they yeah. submitted it sure. so then around end of november sir i noticed that on the portal it said decision made and uh, and i clicked on the decision made and it just said we received medical and we started processing in november something so it wasn't clear what was the decision yeah. and i think today today actually yeah i was gone somewhere and then when i came home she just showed me this document which was actually co pr and he said they have changed it this yeah. is not really a landing document it is the document and now we need to send this 
and the PR photo. We have it because we took the photo for medical, which was again from the Canadian style. So we need to submit this and that to the mail, and we can already use this letter to get her fees reduced for the next semester, uh, this semester because the school told her. So oh. so yeah, I think we are we are we are pretty much done. And this was in Canada Express and uh, sorry in Canada spouse sponsorship. That. Uh, let me let me just let me just congratulate your wife. New, uh, first of all, I think uh, it's your uh, it's your good fortune to have a, such a hardworking and such a methodical husband who 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 does his homework, who looks at the checklist, who knows what to do, who's proofreading, who's correcting, who's ensuring that all the all the you know I's uh, are, are, are dotted and T's are crossed and. I think it's it's wonderful. I, I hope he's uh, he's doing all the house chores, household chores. He's, is he is he cleaning all the dishes or what does he do in the home? Uh, no, no. Yeah, but he he helped me a lot. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he makes sure he wash dishes once a day. Once a day, yeah. Uh, he he looks like a he looks like a pretty smart guy, and you know he is the uh, and I told him I think uh, two years uh, as well. He is the. He is the perfect client what any immigration lawyer wants because he is he has done his homework he's following instructions he's doing his work and collecting assembling documents he's the and uh, he is the perfect client for my practice as well because I like guys like him who will who will make their uh, homework uh, in advance to ask me questions so that I can just attack those questions uh, pointedly. Uh, so that I don't have to do the whole application for him. I don't have to give him the whole monologue of history of uh, spouse visa applications. I know he has specific questions. I can answer them and he's on his way. So he's the perfect client. Uh, typically, in all spouse uh, sponsorship applications, whether they are done in Canada or outside Canada, you go to any lawyer in, uh, in Toronto area, GT area, uh, depending on how big they are or how uh, you know uh, you know established their services, they will charge anywhere from maybe three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars in that range, plus the government fees. Um, in that day, they they will ask the information from you and have you know assistants fill up the forms and 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 that's how it goes. But your husband is the perfect client in sense that he has saved himself money. By, <laughs> By just doing by just doing the application in I think two consultations. Uh, yes, sir. I would say one, sir. I would just say one, one paid consultation. One First time I wanted to do it, but I think you kind of indicated indirectly that's better. I do it, but you told me what all is needed. Correct, yeah. correct, correct. So that was that was also at the part when you were looking at the express entry and how to go to Canada. Yeah, that time we had few paid yeah. consultations. So. Express entry. so so at the end of the day, only one consultation, just pay $275. At that time, it used to be $220 actually. Yeah, uh, and, and just one consultation, he has won the whole immigration battle. He's got the PR for himself. He's got the PR for the wife. You are the proud uh, immigrants in Canada. You know, Canada loves you. They want, uh, they want diverse couple like you, educated, smart, young, uh, who have a promising future ahead of them, and you know it's a it's a lovely Canadian immigration story, and uh, I the reason why we are talking to you publicly because I want this example to be shown to many other couples who are in different stages of preparing uh, those documentations and thinking, hey, where should I get married? Should I get married here or should in India or somewhere? How many people to call and stuff? You know what? Uh, should we have a honeymoon or not? Should we have this much photos or not? There are a lot of questions, and of course they ask and. Uh, but they don't fall through the, the the instructions. I think this is a wonderful story, uh, uh, you know, for both of you. And I really congratulate you from the bottom of my heart that uh, this is a, uh, you know, this is a story of the day I was looking to get. And and now, lo and behold, we have it. Uh, so uh, both of you are PR now, and uh, you 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 told me that she's working, uh, she's studying. What are you studying? What is your wife studying? I'm studying. Um graduate certificate for uh, professional accounting. So you yeah. want eventually you will become an accountant, a CPA, a CGA or something? Yeah, a CPA. Yeah, that's a, a ultimate goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you you spent some time in, in San Jose, California as well. How do you compare the 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 Bay Area with uh, with where you are living in GTA? Here? How do you just compare? I mean, do, what what is the 
what are the similarities or differences you see? Yeah, I think it's quite um, uh, similar. Um, I don't think because it's here in Canada, one thing is just the winter. Like <laughs> in Cali California, there is like uh, winter couldn't compare to here. But I really uh, this is I, not, I don't find any different. You, yeah. you, you have you have not seen the winter until you come to Edmonton. You'll see the real source. <laughs> I show her the Edmonton weather. I said, this is where Mr. Amarjo should be moved there. And there's like, no. but sir, this winter is very. This winter, very... this winter is mild. It is, it is little uh, mild and temperate as compared to um, earlier years. And I, I remember, and people who are in Edmonton who are watching this will confirm that uh, sometimes uh, it goes to minus 25, minus 30. Sometimes for a few days, it can go even minus 35. It becomes, there's a chilling uh, warning, you know, you better stay inside, otherwise you get a frostbite. So it becomes uh, uh, very frigid sometimes. But nowadays, I think it's, uh, I, I don't know what the temperature is. I think it should be, uh, it is very, very mild compared to what we are accustomed to. Uh, but but uh, California weather is always nice. And I talk, I have some friends in California who live in, uh, you know, Bay Area in, uh, in Berkeley, in Pleasanton, California. And, you know, I always I'm jealous. And when they when they're walking, you know, or hiking, uh, you know, some, you know, it, uh, it's, it's just uh, it's just a, uh, it's a feeling that, you know, you, you think that you, you should move to California. But, uh, you know, as you say, as you in your example, people are moving from there to here. And I have a lot of H1B uh, clients uh, mm -hmm. are looking to come to Canada. And because the the future of green card is is fast evading them, and you know it's just not something that they can achieve. What what did Rajat? What advice do you have for people who are in U.S. right now? Because you live there, you work there, you studied there, and now you are in in Toronto area. What advice do you have for people who are in California right now, who are who are uh, languishing on their way to green card? I mean, I would just uh, tell them that you know now is the right time. To come i mean for me the decision was easy uh, sir again it like depends on individuals those who have american born children and who have bought a house there you know it's and who have lived there for like eight years or so it took it's it's hard for them i think but i would just suggest them that you know since you are on some visa just visit here spend some time here and see if this is what you're looking for i mean if mentally you are prepared to one day go back if the situation arises well and good i mean keep living there keep making money and be patient and you'll get your green card but if you want to live in north america permanently uh, this is the place right now because uh, the uh, there is a because again none of us are getting any younger as you age uh, you stop getting points and uh, i would like especially say for those uh, new graduates who just like having three four years of work experience to really sit down and decide that is it okay or is it worth it for me i wanted more stability you know for my wife and at least now for the first time we even talk about you know maybe having a home few years down the line what type whether we want a condo or a townhouse at least we are having these discussions which were non-existent when i was you know in us because now i can plan long term so now, now you you don't have you don't have to tell me you don't have to divulge the pri private information about your salary though but are you making enough money as you were making in California here or not or it's more or less? Uh, so, sir, not as much as uh, California. Now, the, see, the salaries in the U.S. are anyways, like in California are way higher. Uh, but, you know, uh, what I was getting, so I had changed jobs recently. So in June of 29, uh, 2020, I started working again in the new field, like within my major, but different domain. Um, salary was very low because I had just started. But just in seven months, all I can say is the salary has increased over 100% from that job and this job. And there is an elevation in the position. So you need to be a little flexible. But if you're in the tech industry, you really don't need to worry. Yes, the salary will be less than what you're making in US. But again, your spouse will also be working eventually. And, and you know, you can offset the difference. You know, you can do something on the side and you have all that freedom you can take up contract jobs so you know one of your spouse can be a full-time employee you use those benefits and the other person can be a contractor so like at least in my industry con contractors do make a lot of money so i mean it's up to you you know you need to decide whether you want stability or like if you're happy where you are then you know it's 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 everyone's own decision yeah. 
Look, a lot of, lot of computer engineers and software specialists from Silicon Valley, they tell me that if they want to find a job in, uh, in Canada, uh, the, the Canadian employers are reluctant to hire them because they don't have a visa, they don't have a working right. So uh, are, are the Canadian employers, and you are working for a tech company, I, I guess, uh, are the Canadian employers open to even talking to US-based uh, software engineers or they don't, they don't care? Uh, so, yeah, so, so here's the thing, because unless it's a big company, like a Shopify, those type of companies, they do sponsor because, sir, honestly, there is no dearth of skilled labor here, the, the skilled workers, because Canada keeps bringing immigrants. Like so you. there is plenty like of plenty of talent available, I'll be honest. So that way, so that's why the salaries, you know, yeah. but they are getting there because many American companies are opening their offices here. And because of COVID, many American companies are now hiring remotely as well. So even when you're sitting here in the long term, you can always find uh, companies in US that will pay you really well and you're still sitting here and working. So, so I think at least for my industry, I think there is no issue anymore as long as you are now in North America, you are in Canada. So, and even European companies are now opening up, you know, to hiring you as a Canadian remotely for them because the time zones, you know, they are they are pretty manageable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I have I have a strong feeling that uh, one of these days, uh, you know, this interview and your story will be highlighted by the immigration department itself because. <laughs> You are a, you are a multiracial couple, and uh, you have a wonderful story, a background from U.S. Uh, and 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 techie people uh, moving from U.S. to uh, to Canada, and and a wonderful love story uh, from different countries, India and Vietnam. By the way, if, uh, you you may not know this, India and Vietnam, including all in China, these three countries are the major exporters of students from their country to here. If you move around GTA area and uh, in pretty much in Vancouver area, you will see uh, all over the international student population is comprised only of India, China, Vietnam, and Philippines. And you already have uh, two, <laughs> two uh, representations in your family. So it's time now to start your family. And I'm just wondering, this is my last question. Uh, when you have children, I mean, how, how will they... Uh, what culture, what language will they learn and how, how will that happen? Can you just give me a little suggestions? <laughs> we haven't planned yet, sir, but eventually if we have an answer, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hey, thank you very much uh, for your, uh, uh, for your uh, you know, getting some time available to call me after getting this good news and thinking about me. And I, I congratulate you on your future progress in Canada. And uh, uh, it's within time, I think after three years or so, you will say that you are a proud Canadian citizen with a Canadian passport. And you know what my feeling is that once you have a Canadian passport, maybe some Silicon Valley employers will lure you back there and say, hey, come, come on in, work there on a NAFTA visa. Yeah, uh, TN visa. So that's <laughs> always uh, likely to happen. But uh, till that time, I wish you uh, well and, uh, you know, uh, thank you for calling and thank you for giving me the good news. Thank you, Mr. Amarjot. And uh, in future, if we ever visit Edmonton, we'll definitely, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll definitely meet. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a Bye. good day. Bye-bye, Rajat. Bye-bye.